Good afternoon. For the best viewing and audio experience, we recommend that you use Chrome as your browser during the event. We also recommend that you minimize the number of open windows you may have. Welcome to today's event. We will begin shortly, but need to cover a few housekeeping items before we start. Due to a large number of attendees, we have muted participants to reduce audio interference. For better viewing, you may expand or minimize your menu control panel by clicking on the orange tab located on the left edge of the panel. If you have technical issues, please use the chat feature located at the bottom of your control panel to send a message and we will try to assist you. Questions or comments may also be submitted using the chat feature. Questions we are unable to address during the live session will be answered in a follow-up correspondence. A recording of this event will be placed on the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center website as soon as possible. For those of you who are not familiar with the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center, we provide a compilation of best practices and firsthand experiences from jurisdictions that have used this method of voting with a focus on election administration. Our website, www.rcbresources.org, and our other resources have been developed as an educational tool for election administrators, policymakers, voters, candidates, and others. With that, I will send it on over to Gary Bartlett, our Executive Director for opening comments and to introduce today's presenters. Thank you, Kelly. I am Gary Bartlett, the Executive Director of the Ranked Choice Voting Resource Center, and it is my honor to welcome each of you to today's webinar. We appreciate your time and interest, but most important, thank you for all you do for Ranked Choice Voting. Today we have a very exciting uh, program for you, and we're going to introduce you to RCV Maps, Understanding RCV Implementation in the United States. So what is RCV Maps? RCV Maps is a high-level overview of RCV readiness to implement ranked choice voting elections in all 50 states and Washington, D.C. The genesis of this project started around 2018. The Resource Center began receiving similar and recurring questions from states and local jurisdictions about RCV in information, need of assistance, and where to get started. Out of necessity, RCV Maps became the innovation of Chris Hughes, our policy director and in-house attorney. For almost two years, Chris and Melissa Hall, our educational director, researched, collected, wrote, and edited all state RCV assessments plus Washington, D.C. They were assisted by Rosemary Blizzard, our business manager and director of communications, and Kelly Secrest, our director of development. Each state assessment includes a general evaluation of election practices in each state, as well as an analysis of changes to state election administration infrastructure that may be required to implement ranked choice voting. RCV Maps is a living document and will be periodically updated. It is a starting point. Upon request with sufficient time, we can provide more in-depth information for those who need it. With that said, I would like to introduce Chris and Melissa and we can get started. Chris is our policy director and counsel for the Resource Center. He ensures administrators, activists, policymakers, are speaking the same language as it comes to ranked choice voting. And that's from uh, draft legislation through election day. He serves on the e, uh, EAC VVSG public working group on voting methods. More specific, he and George Gilbert of our staff have 
drafted for the group's consideration RCV standards for voluntary voting equipment standards. Chris worked with policymakers and staff on RCV legislation and has provided testimony in several states. He is also he also generously shares his knowledge with election officials, stakeholders, and advocates. He co-produces RCV uh, podcasts and RCV clips. Chris is admitted to practice law in the state of New York. Melissa Hall is our educational director. She joined the Resource Center in 2019 and has a background in public education. She has served as a middle grades classroom teacher in multiple subjects. She also has served as a poll worker in her home county. Melissa helps develop, evaluate, and coordinate educational programs and activities related to the RCV implementation and administration. She also works as a coordinator with our webinar series and our uh, RCVRC podcast and RCV clips. Now I would like to turn things over to Chris to get underway. Chris? Thanks, Gary. Um, thanks for that great introduction. Really excited to talk to everybody today about RCV Maps. Um, as you heard in Gary's introduction, RCV Maps is a, a very a many year long project now at this point. Um, and I still feel like some days we're just getting started. Um, so I'm going to quickly walk through the planned agenda for today. Uh, and then I'll get going with my my part of the presentation. So the first thing I'll cover is a, a little similar to what Gary just talked about, which is what is RCV Maps? Then I'll talk about why we made it, which again, we'll just expand on, on Gary's introduction. And then I'll talk how, about how we actually pulled all the research together, both the things we did look at and the things that we didn't research, but hope to uh, incorporate more fully in the next version of this project. Um, and then I'll pass it off to um, to Melissa, who will walk us through where you can find uh, the project on our website, what's next for the project, and lessons learned from uh, putting together a project this big uh, with a small staff. So what is RCV Maps? Like Gary said, it's a state-by-state -state analysis of election administration uh, and what how that election administration currently works and uh, possible changes that may be needed to actually implement ranked choice voting at the state level in those states. Um, I do want to emphasize that this is the first cut of that analysis of that of that research. Uh, I think there's still a lot to learn, but we wanted to we knew we needed to start scratching the surface and and getting a handhold in each of these states. Uh, and so we've designed each of the assessments to be that introduction to get you some of the basics of information you need to understand uh, about implementing ranked choice voting uh, and about local election administration in your state, just to see what big questions uh, remain to be answered uh, and places where more research may be necessary. MAPS itself stands for the Multi-State Assessment Project. Uh, we had called the project RCV MAPS internally the whole time we were doing it. And then when it came time to launch it, we were like, but what does that we, we love giving things very literal names here at the Resource Center. Um, and we started trying to call it something else, but realized we liked how RCV MAPS sounded. So we decided that MAPS stands for the Multi-State Assessment Project. Just a nice little backronym that we made for ourselves. So before I dive in any deeper, I know we have a mix of attendees on this, on this webinar. We have people who are Siri experts in election administration, actual election administrators from across the country. We have ranked choice voting advocates who have uh, sort of looked at administration really closely in their cities and their counties and their states. And we have people who are totally new to the concept of election administration. So I just wanna briefly define it uh, so that everyone can sort of be on the same page. In short, election administration uh, is the acts and processes underlying the conduct of elections in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's going through growing pains as elections become more professionalized and technology driven, and as our democracy comes under attack from anti-democratic forces. 
And uh, it's hierarchical and decentralized all at once. It's the best and worst thing in American elections. Um, at the end of the day, it's infrastructure. It is a human and technological infrastructure that holds up our democracy. It's the thing that actually makes our democracy run. Um, and it's it's incredible the amount of variety we have statewide, uh, within states across the country. And that's one big thing we sort of learned in doing this project is just how much rank choice or how much election administration itself is um, this homegrown process across the country. So why did we make RCV maps? Like Gary said, we kept getting the same questions over and over again from uh, ranked choice voting advocates and from election administrators. So we thought it would help um, to put together a report for each state, laying out um, some of those, some basic starts to those major questions that people tend to have about running a ranked choice voting election. Um, this also ties in directly to our entire reason for being. We exist as an, as an organization because implementing ranked choice voting is something that has both best practices and is a little bit tailored to every single jurisdiction where ranked choice voting uh, is getting adopted. Um, so that's how we started putting this together. We wanted to just give everyone as many people as possible, a good starting point for those conversations as ranked choice voting is getting taken seriously in a city, county, or a state. Um, I do wanna note, uh, as I said before, everything in the assessments are is at the state level. So we're really only, we only looked at state law. We looked at, um, that, that was our focus just because getting down to the city and county level would have taken even more time than this project took. But we, uh, also, ex we tried to also break things up in the report such that you can apply at least some of these lessons to city and county level election administration for ranked choice voting elections. So what's in an assessment? There are two flavors of assessment. There's full assessments, uh, which are uh, make up 33 of the assessments we've written, and there's voting system only assessments. There's 18 of those. Uh, to be perfectly frank with everyone, we wound up splitting things up this way because we had just been working on this project for so long uh, that, uh, but we weren't making enough progress quickly enough to make a full assessment for every state. So we wound up doing, once we had gotten to 33 assessments, we were like, okay, we need to actually get this project done. Let's do voting system only assessments for the other 18 states we have left. Um, we had prioritized some states to do first. So the full assessment includes state we, states we'd prioritized um, and the voting system only assessment includes states where there was relatively less ranked choice voting uh, activity when we started the project. Um, we focus on voting system only as the sort of break here because the voting system assessment is the more or less the simplest part of this work to do. It requires the least relative amount of research compared to the full assessments. So our full assessments include uh, a ballot law analysis, a brief survey of the law uh, regulating ballot design and uh, ballot layout in a state to understand if there's any obstacles for ranked choice voting. Um, and then it includes an analysis of the results reporting practices, results reporting laws and procedures in a state, uh, again, to understand what processes already exist that may um, maybe uh, sort of jumpstart for ranked choice voting, what, what processes exist that may be a barrier and what processes need to be created in the first place. Uh, and then finally, there's a voting system writing this assessment. This is where we looked at all of the equipment used in uh, the city or the county, uh, every city or every county in a state um, and analyzed it for whether it can actually capture a ranked choice voting ballot and whether it can uh, run the round by round count in a ranked choice voting election. Um, I should note that on the ballot law and results reporting analyses, these are primarily uh, just regurgitations of what the law says. It's uh, not legal advice. It doesn't create any sort of um, attorney client relationship. And if you do want to get deeper into any of this information, we can either work with you uh, in detail on questions you may have on those aspects, or 
um, it may also be helpful to reach out to a local election law expert in your city or county or, or state who understands those laws really well. Uh, and then, of course, our voting system only assessments include only the voting system uh, analysis that I discussed. So how did we actually go about creating this project? Uh, it was a lot of research. Uh, we had to do a lot of sifting through elections code and election regulations um, to understand what state law did and didn't require uh, for each of these provisions or each of these uh, chunks of analysis that we were doing. Um, we also sifted through election administration manuals and other publicly available information from elections offices to better understand their business processes and how they uh, are running election data back and forth from precincts to counties and counties to states. Um, we relied really heavily on um, Verified Voting, which is an election integrity organization. On this tool, they have called the Verifier, excuse me, the Verifier, which is this incredible resource that breaks down what equipment is used in every city or every county in a state. Um, so it, it tells you every piece of hardware that's used in each county in the United States for elections. Um, we also got a lot of great feedback from local organizations. We sent uh, multiple versions of these assessments around to some of the people on this meeting and, and other folks to get feedback to make sure that you know we were drafting things in a way that made sense to people that was tangible for people who are both election administration experts and completely new to election administration. Um, <laughs> with that feedback and with internal feedback that we had, we had a lot of rounds of revisions and we were continually like improving and streamlining and, and straightening things out in the assessment. Um, one thing I want to note is that if you look at multiple state assessments, you'll see that there's actually a lot of repeated and boilerplate language across these assessments because uh, half of what we're trying to do with these assessments is just lay out, here are these existing, pre-existing election administration practices in the states, in, in cities and counties. Here's how they actually run their elections so that as you're looking in your backyard, if you're an election administrator, if you're an advocate, so you can see those practices and map them on to what you see locally. Where are places where what Maine does for getting their election results, what San Francisco does for getting their election results, where are places where you can plug those practices in, uh, in your local elections. Uh, one thing I do wanna note, we everything in the, re in the assessments is based on uh, statutory law. So laws passed by, uh, by legislatures and uh, based on regulations, we didn't do case law research. And case law research is of course a major part of understanding these things. So again, there's much deeper research to be done, but this is a huge, huge step towards uh, cataloging the sorts of laws that implement or that impact range choice funding implementation and towards creating more concrete steps and concrete questions to ask when you're looking at ranked choice voting implementation in a state. So with that, I'm gonna pass it off to Melissa to give us a tour of the assessments. Thanks, Chris. So where do you find RCV maps? It will be live on our website, rcvresources.org, later today after the webinar. RCV maps will be located under the Tools tab on the menu at the top of the page. You can also access it by going directly to the link shown here, rcvresources.org slash state dash assessments. So now I just want to take a few minutes to kind of show you a quick look at RCV maps on our website. So let me share my screen. So is everyone seeing the website? Okay. So at the top of our website, there's a menu bar. You would then go to the tools tab. Under tools, RCV maps will be the second one listed later today under the tabulator. So this here is the RCV maps homepage. So scrolling down, we see that we kind of have a Sorry, there we go. We have a quick intro to the project, and we have a couple of high-level questions that we wanted to cover here as well. Then there's a color-coded map, and that shows you how we label. Oh, 
This map is also interactive. So on your state below. There's four different of the page. Sorry. There we go. Um, well, let's say your audio is cutting out for me. I don't know if it is for anybody else. I am picking that up also. Okay. Looks like, yeah, that's happening. Um, let's give it one second. Melissa, try, let's try one more time. Just testing. I don't know what, what we want to use as a testing audio. Hear me? And have you closed all your other tabs, Melissa? Is this the only thing open? I'll have a second. Mm. No. Yes, but you're still a little choppy yeah, for me. Let's try one more time. <laughs> I have a very weak signal. It's coming and going. Of mm, course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, you're coming through clearer now. Let's give it one more try. And if we continue to have issues, I, um, I'll i give the people the rest of the tour. But I, I want to give you the chance to do this because, you know, you do yeah. all this work. So anyway, let's one more try. One more try. Yeah. All right. So I'll just pick up. So, of course, we know the map is interactive. So you can um, click on the state from the map itself, or you can use the state list um, that we had shown below to go to that assessments page. And then, of course, below the state list itself, we have four different buttons. Some of these are probably self-explanatory. Um, the all 51 state assessments. So we're going to click on that. And that goes to the national compilation document. And this is um, the one that has all of the assessments in one document. So 50 states plus DC. And as you can see here, it's a long document, over 700 pages total. So then we're gonna go back to here and we have the how we score guide. And so this is the document that I was trying to mention earlier, hopefully you guys heard me, um, that basically explains how we labeled and scored each state. Then we have on the back on the website, we have RCV Maps FAQ. Um, and as you see here, it goes directly to a separate page for the frequently asked questions about this project. And if you were to click on the question, then the answer will be shown below. And then on the website, the last button we have just to show you uh, is the additional resources. And that would just go to a folder that has jurisdiction examples um, sample ballots and state election admin resources as well. Uh, just keep in mind that not every state has additional resources. So now let's take a look at the state page. So we're going to click on Arizona. So here, of course, is the Arizona state page. Each state's page follows the same format. So we have a quick intro followed by some basic state information to kind of help set the stage for the assessment. So it talks about like when did Arizona become a state, how many election jurisdictions there are, how many registered voters, you know, what's the voter turnout look like. Then we have some information about their election administration, followed by um, Arizona's voting systems and our RCV readiness score and category. Then at the bottom, we also have links to go back to the FAQ and the How We Score Guide, similar to what we had on the homepage. Um, the button here for the Arizona State Assessment, when you click on that, that'll allow you to view and or download the assessment. So every a state assessment is going to look similar to this. So it has a cover page. It has a table of contents, you know, and then, of course, the text of the assessments below that. So, you know, it's a lot of words. <laughs> I know Chris and I are um, really proud of the work that we put into making these and pulling these together. So we hope you will all find them really valuable. Arizona here is a full assessment. So as Chris mentioned, you know, it has analysis of its ballot law, results reporting practices, and voting systems. 
So now I'm going to scroll down to the appendix. I uh, want to give you guys an idea of some of the resources we have here. So we have a county by county breakdown of the sets of voting equipment that's used. Uh, you know, because we know a lot of places may not be running straight to RCV statewide and that county level stuff is still really important. So we wanted to make that information tangible. Then there's a couple of different um, RCV sample ballots for you to see. And they're also from the voting system vendors in a given state. So um, here for Arizona, we have Dominion. We have some for ESNS and also Unison. So that's kind of a quick view of RCV maps and the state assessments. So now I'm going to go back to the presentation. So what's next for RCV maps? So we plan on updating the assessments every two years on the even year. So originally it was planned for 2020 with updates released in 2022, you know, 2024 and so on. That was our goal. Um, but in this case, we are publishing these in 2021 and the next release is still planned for 2022. So it's likely that we've done a lot of the heavy lifting already with getting these first round of assessments out so we'll be able to get another set out next year. In the next cycle, we are planning to include updates to the voting systems data. Because verified voting updates their verifier data every two years. And like Chris mentioned, you know, that huge data resource that we relied on was the verifier for the voting system portion of all 51 assessments. Also, we are planning on expanding all of our voting system only assessments to full assessments. So our goal is to have full assessments for all 50 states and DC. Then as you guys um, all review and use these assessments, we will incorporate that feedback we receive as well. We're also able to provide a deeper analysis upon request of any particular section of these assessments. So if you want more information or more context, um, you know, but given that we are a relatively small team, we're kind of need to triage those requests. So we can set up a call and talk or better define your needs and see what we can do and you know, give you a timeline for that. So here's a few lessons learned. So we kind of sort of hinted at a few of these. So one of the biggest things that has become really clear through drafting these assessments and as state level RCV bills have been taken more seriously, essentially is RCV, if it's adopted at the state level in particular, will be a generally big state level election administrators and elections. So right now, nearly everything in elections happens or is the, really the responsibility of the counties. The state provides a clearinghouse role for most things, but is not involved in the day-to-day -day counting and production of election results. So RCV would certainly change that because it requires that you, you know, if you're running a statewide election, you would need to get all of your RCV data to a central location in the state, and then you would run the round-by-round -round count on that data. And that would be a big change, right? Because the state in pretty much every state we looked at, the state is not all directly um, involved in producing results. So that's one thing we wanted to mention here, you know, is just how much that could really shift the dynamic in these states. Another thing we learned, you know, again and again, is there's a fair amount of, you know, sort of baseline similarity across states and how they run elections. You know, but of course, every state also has a ton of their own local processes as well. So every state's law is different. So there's probably going to have some unique challenges and hurdles to, uh, to clear, you know, in every state related to RCV. So we'll kind of see how this plays out in the future, you know, but it's our sense that it's mostly a change of practice. Laws and states tend not to get in the way of RCV, but they certainly don't consider the possibility of it. So there's kind of a bit of a mismatch there and we'll see how that plays out in practice as well. So overall, you know, for a big project like this, staying organized is crucial. A lot of things were happening, you know, at the same time, there was a lot of research uh, to keep up with and organize. You know, we put a lot of work just into making sure we had a file system and a file structure in place, you know, folders that made sense and were easy to find. 
that <laughs> helped, you know, ease a lot of the friction that could have existed if we weren't better organized. So, you know, I'm sure there's ways we could have, you know, been even better, but this really helped us get the job done. So, and with that, I'm gonna pass it off to Kelly, our development director. Hey everybody, thank you again for supporting um, our organization and coming to this webinar today. We are so proud of the work that Melissa and Chris have done for this project. So um, we appreciate all the kind comments in the chat. Um, if you have asked a question in the chat and it's not been answered yet, we are gonna have some question and answer time after, um, right after this. Um, as I said, I'm Kelly Seacrest and I'm the development director for the Resource Center. Um, some of you may already know um, I see some familiar faces out in the audience today that we are a 501c3 um, nonpartisan nonprofit organization. So what that means is that we really do depend on donations from folks like you and um, foundations and other funders to be able to do these projects, to be able to do our webinar series, to be able to produce our podcast. Um, and if you're interested at all in supporting that, um, head on over to our website. You can see it there, um, rcbresources.org, and there's a little donate button at the bottom, or you can just go straight to rcbresources.org slash donate. Um, thank you so much again for being here, and I'm going to hand it back over to Chris and Melissa for some questions. All right, I will um, throw out a few questions for you guys. Um, Karen asks, is there any thought to include info on which states have active grassroots organizations working to get RCV implemented? Uh, I can answer that a bit and I'll ask Melissa to pitch in anything else. So I, we haven't thought about that. I think that's something we could consider, um, but we don't, I'd say the place, the best place to look for that sort of information, like who, what grassroots organizations are are doing ranked choice voting work would be somewhere like fair vote or rank the vote, the folks who are uh, doing the most work with those sorts of grassroots organizations, but they're, they're will at least, you know, include links out to those places where people can find that sort of information. And Melissa, anything Great. you want to add? Oh, we lost Melissa. Uh oh. <laughs> well, hopefully she'll One thing we soon. definitely have learned <laughs> is Technology is wonderful until it's not. So thanks yep. for your patience, everyone, as we have a few little tech issues this morning or this yeah. afternoon. Um, Rachel asks, does the RCV readiness assessment take into account readiness for a statewide RCV election? Um, essentially, yeah. So the way we've scored things, and I saw there was another question about scoring in the chat. I think this will help answer both those questions. The way we score things is pretty, it's a little bit of a brute force instrument. We're looking only at the equipment, the voting systems used in each county or city or state um, to see if that equipment is ranked choice voting capable. And to actually get a score where we like assigned those labels that you saw on the website that Melissa walked through, we take the total number of counties or cities, whatever is the relevant election administration jurisdiction in a state, because some states administer at the city level, some at the county level. We take however many counties have ranked choice voting capable equipment. Let's say there's 50 counties that have ranked choice voting capable equipment out of 100 counties in the state. We'll take those 50 counties divided by the total number of counties, 100. And that gives it a score of 50%. In our um, rubric of scores, that's a prepping for ranked choice voting state. So... Um, this is all explained in more detail in that how we score states document because we wanted to make sure we explained our methodology in like a documented way. Um, but that is how we're actually scoring things. So we are, um, we're scoring at the state level, but based on county or city level data, depending on the state in question. And that's part of the reason we included those, um, the appendix that's broken down county by county so that you can see, oh, does my county have ranked choice voting capable equipment? Yes or no. Um, we didn't score. We like tried to explore scoring based on ballot law and based on results reporting. And we honestly couldn't figure out how to score it right. So we just 
put that aside. Maybe we'll bring scoring in for those things in, in, in a future iteration. But for now, scoring uh, and the readiness like score we've given places is just based on voting systems um, that are used at the county or city level. Great. So I see there's some great conversation going on in the chat. Um, thank you, Lynn, for asking the question. Um, you know, RCV has been vetoed three times by three different governors. Strategies to overcome that. And, and Chris, I don't know if you want to address that in terms of questions people have about the administration side um, that seem to be a roadblock. Yeah, well, I know in California, I I think anybody in California has a better read on the situation there than I do. Um, but I, I think part of it is that the last, at least the last two governors have a history of electoral in the Democratic Party in San Francisco County and Alameda County. And those places use ranked choice voting and establishment candidates have not always done great in those places under ranked choice voting elections. So the people who wind up governors in California aren't always the biggest fans of, of this voting method that they think is a threat to their uh, power in the state. I, <laughs> I wish I knew. I think if we, if there were a great answer to how to overcome that roadblock, um, we would have ranked choice voting already in California. I think like Steve said in the chat, like Andy said in the chat, it's partly about creating more grassroots power by getting it adopted in more cities and counties. Um, and it's, it's also about like try finding ways to get inroads with the establishment Democrats who tend to be a little more wary of it, of ranked choice voting. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> I wish I knew for sure what to do there, but I, I just think like Steve and Andy said, it's about building more, local power to make it so that it's a serious liability for the governor to veto ranked choice voting again. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Chris. Ken um, ask with regard to the voting system analysis, were counts of voting machine types, vendor model, et cetera, obtained directly from each state's perspective board of elections or just from what was available online? I've struggled with discrepancies posted on my state's board of elections website. Yeah, that's a great question, Ken. And this is why we decided to rely on verified voting because they're a single source of this data. Um, the, I think the challenging thing generally is not all states publish this information at the county or city level, at the level we needed it for our analysis, um, or at least it's hard to find from them if they're publishing it. And it seems like the states sometimes are falling behind um, in keeping track with that data. Um, and that, you know, that's just partly the nature of how this data gets reported up this state. Like we, like Melissa was saying, things are so decentralized in some places. Sometimes the counties will update equipment and the state won't know for six months because, you know, they didn't have an election. So they didn't report that information to the state. The state isn't telling each county what equipment to buy. Um, so, that's why we relied on verified voting generally. And that's also why we're trying to keep it on a regular, a relative like two year um, update schedule so that nothing ever falls too far out of date because voting systems are always getting updated. Um, I'm sure some of these assessments already are at least a little out of date. Like I'm sure a dozen counties have bought new equipment since we finished drafting them. Um, and that's just the nature of of this business, given that things are so decentralized, given that there's about 8,000 election administration jurisdictions in the country, every something is always going to be changing. Um, so that's how we that's how we decided on our data source. One other data source that I've actually found since we finished drafting is the EAC, the Election Assistance Commission, has a great table of county by county or city by city data of this voting equipment as well. So I would I want to explore how to incorporate that maybe in addition to or or in place of verified voting data, but we haven't, that's something I just found. So we need to explore how to use that. I think I have addressed all of the questions in the chat. Is any, is there any other question? Um, 
that anyone has out there or if, if you want some clarification on the ones I answered in the chat, I would be, we'd be happy to do that. If we don't have any questions, um, definitely want to say thank you again to everyone for attending today. We'll be sending out a recording of the webinar um, as quickly as we can. Um, also, be on the lookout for an email that will let you know when um, RCV Maps goes live on the website. Um, we can't wait for you guys to dive in and see how it can help you in your state. Ooh. Thanks, everybody. Ken, actually, I see Ken has a question. Oh. How can people support oh. this project beyond funding and donations? Oh. Sorry, I should have let you read that, Kelly. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll let you take that away, Chris, or I can address it, either one. Yeah, well, I have some ideas. I'm curious what you have to say, too. So I would say, one, reading the assessments, giving us any feedback that comes to mind, because we do want this to be as useful for, as possible for you. Sending it to your election administrators that you have relationships with to get information from them, see what they think about it. Because again, this is like this is one of our core projects. It's our big research project that we're going to focus on for the foreseeable future. Um, so the more effective and, and more tangible and more useful we can make it, the better. So really would just love to get your feedback and and hear from you about how you've built the assessments into your work and and how it's impacted your work. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just piggyback off that, Ken. You know, anywhere you can share the work of the Resource Center um, is super valuable to us. Um, you know, your words of you know, letting us know, giving us, sending us a quick message to say, hey, here's how I'm using this this um, piece of research. Here's what the, you know, who I shared it with. Um, it's very helpful because we want people to know that we are here to help on, um, you know, RCV implementations and administration. Um, so that's one of the most helpful things you can do, actually. All right. All right. If no one has any more questions, we will give you back a few minutes of this hour and um, look forward to hearing from you guys after you take a look at the, the reports. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.